All right, so this video is about fundamental trig identities. Just so you know, the basic ones is sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tan of theta. You also have to know that tan of theta equals the sine of theta over cosine of theta. All right, and some other basic ones are cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine, and secant of theta is equal to one over cosine. And for that matter, cotan of theta is equal to the reciprocal of this, so cosine of theta over sine of theta. All right, so those are a bunch of the basic ones. Some other basic thing you should know is that sine squared theta is the same thing as sine of theta quantity squared. Same thing for cosine or tangent. All right, so all those are like the really basic identities, fundamental ones. Um, I'll get all that down as a note if you didn't already know them, because um, we can go further from that. I need the space for So anything there you didn't already know, I'll write down. But you probably want to write it all down anyway. All right, so I'm racing the screen. Let's go back a bit. If you remember the unit circle, it basically said we had a point here, and that point could be um, formed using the right triangle. You could find the coordinate for that point, and that coordinate was x, y, or as we decided, it was cosine of theta, sine of theta, where cosine paired with x, and sine was the same thing as the y value. All right, now x value is along this way, y value along this way. And then being a unit circle, we decide this length is one. All right, so if we understood that to be true, one thing you know about this being a right triangle is that a squared plus b squared equals a c squared, right? That's Pythagorean theorem. So if that's true, then x squared plus y squared would have to equal to one squared, or just one. Um, so that's true, this is, well, is one squared, and a new equation would be x squared plus y squared equals to one. All right, so this is something we know is true, and has to be true, because Pythagorean theorem has a whole truth using those facts. Now, let's take those facts, and let's use the idea of cosine and sine to replace for x and y. So that's true. What we have is x squared plus y squared equals a one, and x is really cosine, theta, and y is really sine of theta. Alright, so what we know is that if I gave you cosine quantity squared, let's say things have been cosine squared. And this sine theta squared is saying sine squared theta. Right, they're, they're equal to each other. So a new Pythagorean identity is this cosine squared plus sine squared equals a one. A lot of times you see sine written first, so they don't always write sine second. Some people just get dick picky and just have to see sine first. And you sometimes say it this way. Anyway, this is the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean. Pythagorean identity. And the reason why we call it that is, is derived from the fact that x squared plus y squared equals 1 on the unit circle. And, and we hold it true for everything we do in trig. Now, I'm going to need this space, but I'll write this down as a note. Also, how I derived it, I'll use it as a note. So um, right, pause the video, copy this, and then when you unpause it, I'm going to have some new stuff on the board using facts about this identity here. All right, that's the first Pythagorean identity. We can come up with some other ones if we use facts about this. For example, if I solve this equation for sine, right, if I want to isolate sine, as in it's sine alone, you probably subtract cosine from both sides. Subtract cosine squared theta from both sides. So a new equation I can write is, I know that sine squared theta has equal to one subtract cosine squared theta. So I know that has to be true. This is another identity. I know that sine squared theta has always equal to one subtract cosine squared theta. All right, let's come up with a different one using that 
same idea. All right, in this equation, I solve for sine. Suppose I want to solve this for cosine. Well, you do the same thing. You subtract sine squared theta from both sides. And you wind up having cosine squared theta has equal to 1 subtract sine squared theta. All right, it's another Pythagorean identity based on the fact that the previous one was true. All right, so we got two more of them. This one and that one. This is going to be really useful as we work with these identities later. So be sure to write those down. After you get it, pause the video, copy this down, and after you get it, I'm going to erase the screen. So we'll do that now. All right, let's think about this equation in a different way. Suppose I wanted to take cosine squared and divide everything by it. Divide each part by cosine squared. Divide by this side by cosine squared theta, this piece, and divide this piece by cosine squared theta. You might remember that if I gave you sine over cosine on the previous, on the first slide, sine over cosine, well, is equal to tan of theta, right? You got that written down from the previous slide. All right, so if that's true. Sine squared over cosine squared is just tan squared because both get in squared. Um, cosine squared over cosine squared, that's definitely one. And one over cosine squared is a lot like one over cosine itself, that's, that's secant. So one over cosine squared is just secant squared, theta. All right, so this is a new identity. I know that secant squared will always be equal to tan squared plus one. Some people might take it and put the one first and call it one plus tan squared. Don't let it throw you off. They just move it around on you. Equals secant squared theta. All right, so anyway, that's a new Pythagorean identity. I copied that down. I might give you another one. One last one dealing with this identity. Right. Use the same one, same logic. Instead of dividing my cosine squared, let's see what happens. We divide everything by sine squared theta. All right, so we think about this. But what is sine squared divided by sine squared? Well, that's one. Plus, cosine squared divided by sine squared. Remember, remember that's cotangent. It's got to be squared because both of those are squared. Equals to one over sine squared, which is cosecant, CSC, squared theta. All right, so make that look a little better. All right, so cosecant squared theta. So this is it. This is the last of the Pythagorean identities. So you know, that's about four or five new identities. I'm going to sum them up on this board over here. But anyway, this is what this is what the basic fundamental identities and Pythagorean identities are all about. We're going to use these to solve problems in just a minute. For the sake of time, I won't list them out, but you can. I'll, I'll list them out someplace on your page so you can have them organized and find easier later. All right, but. Basically, when you're using these, you want to use them to simplify stuff. It's kind of like solving a puzzle. So I'll think about this as a puzzle. And basically, I want to get it down to be either sine, cosine, tan, or some combination of the two, like sine plus cosine, or tan plus tan, or whatever. So you, know, you want to break it down to one of those three. I might come up with a number like one or, or whatever. But you don't want to leave it in all these other words. So you might get a whole lot of words here, and you want to simplify it down to be like, one or two words, maybe sine squared or cosine squared or sine subtract cosine and so forth. So just keep that in mind. That's how you know when you're done solving the puzzle, when you get it down to be like a single word or addition of sine and cosine or, or tangent. All right, so first of all, let's think about this. It says simplify cosecant times tangent. You got to remember what cosecant is equal to. Well, cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. All right, so I'll go replace that. Tangent. Remember, it's equal to sine over cosine. And x or theta, they're interchangeable. You can use x or theta, whichever one you do, like most. So if I was multiplying this, I kind of see these signs are going to cancel out. So if I was multiplying this, if you didn't recognize that, you'd multiply share across the top. You say one times sine, because that's sine. On the bottom, you get sine times cosine, so sine times cosine. And at some point, you have to recognize that sine of x divided by cosine of x is just 1.
they cancel out to be one over one. So it leaves you with one over cosine of x. Well, what is one over cosine of x? That's one of the basic identities. So one over cosine of x is secant x. And there you go. Got it down to be one of the words. So it's down to just plain old secant. All right, excuse me, that's one. I got another one for you. All right, so write this one down. Pause the video. And consider what I talked about last in the last note. See if you can figure out this on your own. So write it down, pause the video, and then see if you can figure out what it is without my help. Let's go give it a shot. All right, so if you gave it a shot, you might have thought about it this way. Sine, I don't really change sine, but tangent I would change to be something else. Tangent is equal to sine of x over cosine of x, right? So this is a complex fraction. We work with complex fractions for quite some time now. This simplifies. This means, if I wrote this the long way, it would be sine of x divided by um, sine of x over cosine of x. And this could be a fraction, so it would be sine of x over 1. And I might as well multiply this by the reciprocal, so I'm going to flip this over to be cosine of x over sine x, right? Because when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So now this gives you sine of x times cosine of x all over sine of x. All right, so you might recognize something cancels. So if I gave you that, this is sine of x times cosine of x over sine of x. And these cancel to be 1 over 1, leaving you with cosine of x. So that's what it simplifies to be, to simply cosine of x. So if I gave you sine over tan, simply cosine of x is what it's equal to. All right, good. Give you another one. All right, so look at this one, pause it. Try it on your own, and after you try it, I explain. So pause the video and try it on your own. All right, so this one requires you to know how to factor. If you remember the difference of squares, difference of two squares, you might remember factoring something like this, x squared subtract 9. If you if I asked you this in last year's math class, how would you factor that? What is it factor to be? Think about it. Pause the video and think about what that factor to be. All right, so you might remember this factor is to be a binomial times a binomial, which is x subtract 3 times x plus 3. If you multiply those together, it leads you back to x squared subtract 9. And that's why we call it a difference of two squares. So 9 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square. And when we factor it, it basically winds up in the square root of the first and the square root of the second with a plus or minus sign between the two, making two binomials. All right, so understand that. And let's make it something else. Let's make it like x squared subtract z squared, right? So pause the video, factor x squared subtract z squared. What is that factor to be? All right, so if you thought about it, you might think, well, that's the difference of two squares, too. So I square root the x, square root the z, maybe x and z, and then plus, plus the main sign between them. Same concept, same idea. So let's suppose I made it x to the fourth, subtract y to the fourth. Is that the difference of two squares? Right? It is. X to the fourth is perfect square because it's an even exponent. So it factors. All right. So you might think, well, what is the factor to be? Well, what is square root of x to the fourth? Yeah, so it's x squared. Y to the fourth is y squared. X squared, y squared. You got a plus and minus sign between them. Now, coincidentally, this is still the difference of two squares, right? So this still factors. You extract y x plus y, and then x squared plus y squared. Now this is the sum of two squares. It doesn't factor. And these are not squared anymore, so it didn't it factor any further. So as far as that goes, so all right, so pause the video so I can write, erase this. I'll explain how this should be factored. I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to explain this um, now. The numerator, if you factor that, it should be this. All right, so you got sine squared x, subtract cosine squared x, plus sine squared plus cosine. All right, going back to the puzzle, what is sine squared plus cosine squared equal to? One, right? So let's simplify this. All right, so multiplying by one is not going to change the top. Then you may recognize that the top factors because it's different than two squares again, right? So I'm going to factor that. All right, so this difference of squares factor be sine of x plus cosine, sine of x track cosine. You recognize these going to cancel? You should recognize these cancel to be one, and this is our final answer. That's all I have.